It was a hot night in late 1990 when Jessica and Angela discovered I could not read. It was Jessica's turn to pick the book. While I sat on the bed waiting for her to bring the book, I, I would look at the pictures and make up the stories. Angela had climbed onto my lap. She was only two years old and did not know. But my five-year-old daughter, Jessica, said, No, Mommy, that's not what it said. Jessica had been in kindergarten for four months. She informed me her teacher had read that book in class that day, and she knew that that was not the words in the story. See, I knew it was wrong to make up the stories on the page. I was only 21 when I had had Jessica. However, I wanted Jessica to know it was important to read. Reading can be fun and informative, but will be necessary for most people at some point in their life. At some point, we need to know how to read for our work or to sh to show our kids we love and care for them while sharing the stories in the book. For most parents, reading to their kids is a nice, safe time to share the importance of book and how, book, how they will be important in their lives. Holding back my tears, I was so ashamed I had to stop myself from jumping out of the bed. I was shaking inside with fear of the unknown future for both my kids with the mother who could not help them with even their kindergarten homework. For the first time in our lives, I could see Jessica was right, and she knew it. I, had to, I could see in Jessica's eyes she knew I didn't read the words on the page. I had grown up in foster care, so I moved around and did not watch TV much. However, I had remembered a few homes watching family affairs and family ties. And these shows, the parents were teaching their kids while they were learning family values by reading it to their kids at bedtimes. I felt worthless as a mother. Once I got my kids to sleep, I cried so hard my body was shaking. I wrapped my arms around myself as I cried and grew angrier with every passing moment. The next morning, I woke up with only one thought, how the hell am I going to learn to read? I knew it, I was risking possible failure, but I had to try for myself. First, I called the San Diego Unified School District office. I couldn't believe it in 1995. I mean, 1990, I'm sorry, my mind is not, is reading. For some reason in 90, 1990, she had never heard of a grown-up not knowing how to read. After I had convinced her, in fact, I graduated high school, and I didn't even know how to read, write, or do any math. She asked me, please, give me time to find some help for you. I will ask my coworkers if anyone knows where you can go get help. Only about two minutes later, my phone rang. I have great news. My coworker works for Reed San Diego. 15 minutes later, I was making an appointment to meet Tanya at the Kensington Library. I was scared because I did not only feel stupid, but back then I was 400 pounds at the time, so I believed I was fat and ugly. Tanya was also a larger woman, and she understood and wanted me to have all that life had to offer. Uh, we would meet every Tuesday and Thursdays for two hours. Tanya started teaching me phonics, and then we moved on to children's books so that I couldn't read to my young daughters by myself. Tanya had shown me love and kindness, and over time we had became more than just teacher-student. We were interviewed for The Reader, a San Diego magazine, the article was about the high rise in illiteracy amongst high school graduates and why schools were letting down kids by just passing them despite the fact they could not read. With Tanya's help, I was able to write my first letter, which I wrote to President Bush regarding three very important problems in America in 1991, one of them which was how one out of every five high school graduates is functioning illiterate. I knew both writing the letter and making sure our president 
was aware of the problem and it needed looking into. I also let him know that I had spoken on the Roger Hedgecock show shortly after this. Tanya had opened my eyes to many new wonderful things, not just how to read. Opening myself up to trying new foods like fried green tomatoes. To find out for, for myself what this tastes like. When we went out to celebrate my reading progress, my published article, article and the appearance on the show for what I thought was just a lunch after we ate, Tanya said, just one more place to go. I, I was surprised when we parked at the San Diego City College. Tanya, unknowns to me, had set up for me to take the placement test. I was placed in English 101 when I started attending in 1991-92 semester. I was just one of many children who were let down by the educational system in America in 1990. I would like to say that this is no longer a problem. However, unfortunately, children are still facing the same problem in 2024. Learning to read gave my whole family and me the chance to be the first college graduate in my family. My kids and grandkids understand I will accept, I will not accept anything less than a bachelor. My grandkids know I only want them to try their best to enjoy. I enjoy sitting and reading to my grandkids. Reading was the breath of life I finally could take and enjoy at age 26. It was all worth the risk my first time. In spring of 2024, I decided to go back to City College again, but this time for myself. I, wanted, I went the first time with one plan to teach my kids. If I can, you must. Today, I get to enjoy all college has to offer. Once you know what you want and where you want your life to go, you will know what classes is best for you. The first time no, this time is riskier because I want myself to learn for my dreams to come true.